Welcome back Inkscape for Glowforge users. Today we are going to do a tutorial that talks a little bit about signs. I know that a lot of people are really interested in making signs for either their home, you can make it for a front door, you can make it for a nursery or a child's room. So there's so many different purposes for these signs. This could be great for Christmas, this could be great for the holidays. So uh, today we are going to talk about how to make just a basic sign with some of the basic things that people have been interested in. We will talk about how to make larger signs and different shape signs later, but today we are just going to focus on a circle. So this is the one that I made first. It was just a simple 10 by 10. I included some different flowers and a person's name for my friend's daughter, and I thought it was good. It was a good way to really get started with sign making. And so that's what we're going to really focus on today. So what we are going to do first is we are just going to create a circle. So we create our basic circle over there by clicking the circle button. I would recommend that your fill over here is on and your stroke is off. Everybody has their preferences, um, but for me, I really like seeing this because that kind of helps me visualize this is what the sign actually would look like. But it's totally up to you, but that's my personal preferences. Remember, as you always need to do in Inkscape, is go back up here to the pointer tool, clicking, so that way you can actually move your image around, because if you don't, if you stay on this circle and you try to do that, you're just gonna create another circle and get really confused. So go back to the pointer tool, click on this. When you click on it, you'll see up here your measurements. And so what I would do here is, for me, I like inches, so I always go to inches, and let's just make this a sign that we can do within, I have a basic. So I always wanna make a sign that I can do within my basic in some particular way. So this one would fit easily within the basic and just make it a 10 by 10. Okay, awesome, easy enough. So that's our basic sign. Now, if you want it to just be a solid piece, that is what you can do. Now, some people have asked, well, what if I wanna create a shiplap sign? So a shiplap sign is the one that has like the ridges and it has like the lines across. Some customers really prefer that. So if you really want to make a shiplap sign, let's talk about how to do that. So you can do it by clicking right here. You can do either the pencil, but I wouldn't recommend the pencil because that's freehand. And unless you have a really, really steady hand, I don't think I'm gonna create very straight lines with that tool. So I'm gonna draw this little pen one it's right above the calligraphy-like tool and right under the pencil. And this can help you draw some straight lines. So I'm going to draw mine all the way across so it would get even the biggest diameter of the circle. You can do them in any different way. So if you wanna to try to do them a little bit closer to the circle, that's totally fine. But for purposes here, I'm actually gonna to try to draw it all the way across so I can copy and paste it. So I'm gonna draw mine all the way across here and do that there, okay. And I'll go back and click. Ah, remember you always need to click on your tool. So click on that. And then I have my line here. So you might need to mess with that tool because one of the things that I did is I drug it across, I got it there, and then I would go back to my pointer tool. But look, it's looking like it's gonna create another line. And that way when I clicked on my pointer tool, it didn't necessarily stay the first time, stayed the second time, not the first time. Um, so we have here our lines. So what I'm actually just gonna do is I'm gonna use these lines. I'm gonna hit Control C for copy, Control V for paste. And then I have another line of the exact same length. And then I will actually drag that, let's say up here for, for purposes, because I, I know that we're gonna talk about a line in here. Control C, Control V, awesome. Great. So I know this is really, really poorly done on purpose. So you can see all of these lines, these are not equidistant from each other. That doesn't really look great. Um, your customer probably wouldn't be thrilled if the sign looked like this, or you wouldn't be thrilled if the sign looked like this. And so I wanted to show you guys how to basically align them. So if you click on your circle, if you click on shift, hold shift down while you click on the lines individually, and you can see you want everything to be highlighted individually and then all together. So you can see all of my different lines have little lines around them. So they're all highlighted individually as well as my circle. Now I have this over here already because I use it a decent amount, but what you'll want to do is you'll want to go to Object, Align and Distribute, 
and then that will bring this up over here. So what you'll do over here is if you look at distribute, you can mess with this in a few different ways. It really depends on how you want it aligned. So you can press this first one, which is kind of, it does the equidistant from each other, which is really what I'm looking for. Now you will have to change the first and second ones. So you'll have to mess around with that a little bit, but it definitely helps in that way. You can change it. So maybe the middle doesn't have that. So if maybe if you're doing a big lie, uh, name in the middle or something like that, you might want that for some reason. So that one looks pretty good. So there's a few different ones that you can do, but distribute and I do something on the second row is really, really great for this. And then you can do the first row if you would like to. Um, that's basically just like left justified, center justified. Because I drew the, all the lines right in the middle, it didn't really matter for me um, because all of them are going off the circle anyway. But if you want to do something like that, just to make sure everything's in line, you can do that. So awesome. Now we have our shift lap sign and I'm happy with the way that this looks. So you can kind of either get rid of some of these lines if you would like to, or keep them or shorten them or whatever. Um, so one of the other things that a lot of people like to do with signs is put names on them, obviously. So the first thing that you'll do here is go to your text underneath that calligraphy tool. You'll type whatever you want. Name signs are very, very common. So I'll just type my name. And then from that, one of the things that other people do like to do is, well, first of all, if you want to just engrave your name in a sign, you can just pull that up there and put it up here and then you can just have it engraved. But typically when people think of signs, they think of more of like a 3D type of effect. So this would probably be cut and then glued on your sign. Now, if you want even more of a 3D effect, what you can do is there's two different ways to do this, is you can actually have a thicker version of your name and then you can glue this part of your name on top. And so it pops even more. So you have your sign layer, you have your background layer, and then you have your full name layer. So let me show you guys uh, what that would look like. So you have your name here. If you go to path, if you go down here to linked offset, and don't worry about that. Sometimes my Inkscape stuff disappears for some reason. At first it used to freak me out. Now I know it can come back. So don't worry about that. Um, so what you'll see is this tiny little dot here. And so this tiny little dot will be somewhere within your text. Usually for me, it's either in the middle or the left. So you'll click on this tiny little dot and you'll drag it around your name. Some will make it thicker, some will make it thinner. So I usually don't like to make mine too thick usually about there is what I'm looking for. And then what I always like to do is I like to change the color. If you change the color, it's a lot easier for you to see. Now I'm going to go back to my clicking tool. You can see everything came back. I don't know why it does that sometimes. It just does. I know it comes back. So I'm actually going to take my text. I'll get rid of that. I don't know what that is. And now you would have this cut and then you would have your name cut as well. Now, one of the other things that you can do with your Inkscape is you can do a border and you can engrave this border or you can put the border on top. So my other Inkscape, for whatever reason, closed down. It's been having some system problems. I probably just need to restart my computer, honestly. Um, so if we have here our circle, you can again change that to any color that you want. I always like to turn the stroke off just because I like seeing the regular circle. But again, complete total preference. I know some people that like the outline only. Um, so go to your clicking tool. I always like to click inches because that's what I know how to work with. Resize it again. And then something I can look for. Now, I would recommend that unless it's for personal use, make sure that you are finding a commercial free image. Pixabay is really great for that. There's a lot of free clip art out there that you can use commercially. Um, but something that I would recommend that you do is look for these borders that are commercially approved, again, unless that is something that you are just making for yourself. So there's actually a lot of these different borders that I found that were super fun and cool. So I'm actually going to do this one to start. Click OK. Now, as you can see, pretty tiny. But what we learned before is how to basically trace this as a bitmap. And the bitmap makes it able to be cut by the Glowforge or engraved or all of these other types of things. So if we hit path to trace bitmap up here, 
You can see all your options. I use them for different things, but for this image, it looks pretty good already. So the big thing I want to do is I want to remove the background because I want to make sure that I can use it um, fully the way that I want to without any kind of white edging around it. So I click OK, drag it off of it, and that will be your new image is the one on top. I'll get rid of the old image. And then what I will actually do is you can reformat this in so many different ways here, but I'm going to drag it to the point where I think I would want it on top and actually engraved in this pattern. So let's see. And what you can do here too is you can shift and then you can click the circle and click that and you can actually align that as well. So you can make sure that that is perfectly aligned the way that you want it to be aligned to. So there's a lot of different alignments here, but I always kind of try to make sure that it's centered and things like that. So, all right. So let's say I'm pretty happy with the way that this looks. So that would then be engraved, or you can also have this cut and then you can put this on as a border later. So that's something else that you can do. So hopefully that helps um, when you think about how to make signs in Inkscape. Sorry that my Inkscape was a little bit glitchy today. I'm going to try to restart it and hopefully that will help. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to comment below and have a great day.